and welcome to Read Along with Heather. Today we will be reading The True Story of the Three Little Pigs as told by John Sheshka and illustrated by Elaine Smith. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody's ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You could call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault that wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks will probably think you were big and bad too. Heh, <laughs> touche, Al. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig. And he wasn't too bright either. He had built this whole house out of straw. <laughs> Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to, want to just walk into someone's house, so I called, Little pig! Little pig! Are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when I heard, no started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Oh, well, I huffed. And I snuffed. And I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of the straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole entire time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. The neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not by much. He had built his house of, of sticks. I ran the bed. Bell. I rang the bell on, on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig! Mr. Pig! Are you in? He yelled, Go away, wolf! You can't come in! I'm shaving the hairs of my chinny chin chin! I just, I just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed, and I snuffed, and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did, did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full. But my cold was feeling a little better, and I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house full of sticks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called. Mr. Pig! Mr. Pig! Are you in? 
And you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a full sack full of sugar. They wouldn't give me even one little cup for my sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a snake, instead of a cake, when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed, and I snuffed, and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin! Usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. See? The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured the sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. The end.